Hi guys, I'm here today to do week 16 of the Marguerite Miller Collage Challenge. Um, if you don't know what this is, this is a 52 week prompt collage challenge where you get five prompts each week and then a bonus sixth one which you can swap out the sixth one with one of the other prompts if you don't have the bits and pieces or you can do all six which is what I tend to do and um, yeah you just collage with bits and pieces I will leave the details to Marguerite Miller's YouTube along with the her Etsy store where you can um, purchase the prompts from I've purchased them as a digital download because that's what was easiest and works for me so let's get started. I just want to show you on week 15, um, I just want to show you what I've added to the crown of my cute little fox. I added these little gems, which I just think add something. And then I've just added a bit of shading, but I just love his crown now. It just looks so cute. So let's get started. So week 16 first thing is a photo i wanted to use one of my tim holtz photos and i'm going to use this one of these lovely ladies then the it was a ticket so i've got a few options here um i've got this theater ticket i've got um a large tim holtz ephemera piece ticket and then I have these two. I was sent this one and this is an old one. Uh, 1998 this is from. So, yeah. And then a bird. So, I've got a couple of options. I've got this that I was um, sent and I might use that one. However, I was actually thinking, because this is quite big, so I don't know how it will work on this page. I've got a few bird stamps here, so I might use one of those instead. A date. Um, so the photo itself actually has a date on it, but I also um, wanted to use... Hold on. I can't find them all, but this is one of them. I wanted to use one of these Tim Holtz date things. And so I've got a couple of dates that I can use. Water in some form. Well, I am going to use watercolours. So I've got my cheap shimmer watercolour set here. And I want to use that. Bonus is circles. So I've just got a whole load of random. These are digitals. These are Louisa Heinzel digitals. Um, just cutouts of circles circles there just a whole load of circles i also have this texture stamp which is bubbles so they are circular so i might use them i might want some texture on here so i don't have much of an idea um i've got my little pot of bits again bits and pieces i don't have much of an idea except that I kind of want to base it around these two ladies and I feel like they've got a story. I feel like they're going on a trip because there's ticket in here, water, a date. I just felt it worked with the idea of a trip. Now, I don't like this edge so much. This is huge, this edge. So I'm thinking of, because these are quite thick, I don't think it'd work very well if I tried to... Um, rip it so instead I'm just going to trim it a little bit to make it a little bit smaller I don't really need the date on there because I've got a date somewhere else so I feel like that needs a bit of trim again so yeah I'm just going to trim this down because I just feel like I didn't need all that round a bit and then I'm going to um, just rough up a little bit with my scissors the edges so it doesn't look perfect it's a bit roughed up give me some added texture and um, yeah just a little chair. watching my fingers because I'm my luck 
So this photo really sparked um, like an idea in my head. See how roughed up that is now. Because I've recently uh, watched Death on the Nile, the new Kenneth Branagh. Well, not new, but, you know, it's come on to TV so you can watch it. The Kenneth Branagh um, Agatha Christie adaptation of Death in the, on the Nile. So what I want to do first is I'm actually going to use watercolour to actually colour in these two ladies. Um, so yeah, I was watching that and then that inspired me. These kind of look, well, it's 1920s, but you know, it's moving into the 1930s. I don't know what colours I actually want. Let's go for something a little bright because these aren't actually that bright because even though the colours look really bright, because they're shimmery, it's not as bright as you would think. So I'm just going to use some watercolour to kind of add a bit of colour onto here. So, yeah, and hoping it doesn't seem to be going on great, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, she's got her own bubbles on her coat. There we go. Added a bit more water. Gives it a bit more movement. Um, yes, yeah, so I was watching the Kenneth Branagh adaptation of Murder, uh, Death on the Nile. Don't worry. I'm not going to give any spoilers if you haven't seen it. I am a huge, huge Agatha Christie fan. Um, since I was a teenager, I've read almost all of her works. Um, I'm sure there's some short stories I haven't read. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I've read almost all of her work. I'm just going to dab it a little bit. Um, it's not really coming out the way I wanted it to. So we may not do that. Hmm. I wonder why that is. Okay, so that's not working. So we're going to do something else instead. That's okay. It doesn't matter. I'm going to ink this with some walnut stain though. So yes, I am a huge Agatha Christie fan. Like I said, I've read everything I can get my hands on. I have all her books, or most of her books, including her short stories, in a hardback collection um, that I've had for absolute years. I mean, they're probably vintage now. Anything over 20 years is vintage. Um, and yeah, they're at least probably... 25 years old the collection I have um I've read everything at least probably three times maybe more anyway um yeah so I want them on there and then I'm going to I think use some of this this is the uh encyclopedia page that's left over from here and I don't want to waste it and it's in the collage box so I want to use it and it also said about France and Europe and things and as these ladies are going on a trip I thought that works, and this can just go in the background. Um, yeah, so obviously I wanted to watch the Kenneth Branagh adaptation. I actually reread the book beforehand. Maybe I could use some blue on here, because then that could represent water, couldn't it? Like if I did it like that, and I did some blue on here, maybe. Okay, let's try that. Um, yeah, so I reread the book first. Get these watercolours again. Uh, just to get it fresh in my mind. I also rewatched the um, David Suchet version. Just because I like to compare. And I haven't seen that in a while. I also wanted to watch the Peter Euston off one because that's probably the version of Death on the Nile that... I remember most it was the first version I'd seen and I, I don't know if I like this now that's all right it's watercolor I can water it down um yeah so I wanted to watch the David Suchet version who if you don't know um here in the UK David Suchet kind of became 
and the most well-known Poirot. Um, and I think he embodies him physically so well. Um, so yeah, I rewatched that and then I reread the book before watching the Kenneth Branagh. I have to say, I've obviously watched the Murder on the Orient Express one as well, the Kenneth Branagh one. Um, actually, I've watched it three times. <laughs> Um, because I watched it by myself and I watched it with other people and um, yeah anyway <laughs> I have to say Kenneth Branagh has made a beautiful I'm thinking I want something light on there no I might leave it he's done a beautiful um, hold on because I'm going to dry this Okay, so that's dry now, and I'm hoping you can see, if I get this up, that this has a, I don't know if you can see today, it has a shimmer to it, which works well because it kind of looks like water. So, there we go. Um, as I was saying, I've watched the Kenneth Branagh version several times, and I've now watched the Death on the Nile one twice. Um, and the way the movie is shot is just breathtakingly beautiful. It evokes Agatha Christie, 1930s, opulence, grandeur. It's the, both movies are gorgeous, and I believe there is a third one in the making, which... Just absolutely beautiful. Um, as someone who used to do theatre studies, um, I really appreciate a beautiful set. <laughs> anyway, so it's gorgeous. I'm trying to work out, do I want some? These are just cut-offs um, that I had. Do I want some circles in the background? Do I want some clocks? So that inspired, oh, that's too much blue. I feel like I want to use this one now. It's going to Cornwall. You wouldn't really go to Cornwall on a boat at this time, you know, but maybe they're sailing from Cornwall. And I've got this down here, which is also circular. It's the wrong way around. That's not going to be good, is it? Hmm. Okay. That would be circles, tickets, um, photo. Okay. Um, oh, and I've got this bit of corrugated. It's obviously um, digital corrugated, which means it would keep this flat, but maybe give me some of the texture I'm looking for. So anyway, yeah, beautifully shot, but I'm not sure I like Kenneth Branagh's Poirot. He's really played around, as you do, you know, as his right. He's a film director and artistic license and all that. He's, he's just made Paro too intense and he hasn't got the head, the, which is referred to all the time in the books. Um... Nor does he feel short enough because Pryor is always called short in the books too, the little man. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I'm not sure how I feel about Kenneth Branagh's Poirot yet, if I'm being honest. Um, I've also got these, which I quite liked. Cut some of these out. Where's my scissors gone now? But the movies themselves... Oh, and the other issue, where did my scissors go to? I literally just had them. Okay, we're just going to have to use the big ones. <laughs> and these do not have to be perfectly cut out. And the movie itself is... Um, he did this in the Orient Express one as well. He blended two characters together to create one character. 
thereby changing. And I understand why he did it with that one because it's the character it, himself probably, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's set in the 1930s, so would it have mattered? I'm mumbling now to myself. Anyway, he blended two characters together to make one in the Orient Express. Uh, and changed a few other small factors, but it was mainly the same book, um, the same story. But the, um, I think I really want a clock as well. But the Death on the Nile movie not only blended at least two maybe three of the characters from the book and therefore missed out at least five characters from the actual book itself. And also there's two other crimes, sort of three other crimes other than the murders, but two other main crimes other than the murders going on. Um, that aren't in the movie. And I think, no spoilers. I think if he'd kept those crimes, or at least one of the crimes, if he'd kept those in the movie, the, the, the murderer might have been harder to guess. Because even my partner, who's not great, he at uh, like murder mysteries. Like when we play Cluedo, he's like, oh no, do we have to? Because he, he's like, you guys always guess. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, I kind of like it like that, you know. Um, even my partner guessed the murderer. Uh, yeah. So I just think that was a bit of a. If, had, if they'd had the other crimes, it, it's a bit of a shame there weren't. Anyway, I don't know. Let me know what you think down below. If you have both watched the movie and read the original book, let me know about what you think of the changes that Kenneth Branagh made to the characters and some of the storylines. Um, I mean, obviously, not everything has to stick rigidly. Certainly David Suchet's Poirot didn't stick rigidly to every bit of one of the books. But, um, yeah, I just felt it was a bit of a shame. Um, they also changed some other major bits plot-wise. Um, uh, I, I don't know. Was it to make it simpler for the audience? I don't know. I don't know at all, but loved the movie. Watched it twice <laughs> in the space of a week. Read the book in that same week too. <laughs> and watched the David Suchet version. <laughs> so I actually watched Death on the Nile. In some way, I consumed Death on the Nile either through um, the TV or through a written form. Um... Actually, I was listening to the audiobook as well as reading the book because I can listen to an audiobook while I'm crafting and while I'm um, doing things around the house. And I, <laughs> I listen to the audiobook because not only is it exactly the same as the book, but it's read by David Suchet, <laughs> the one that I got, um, <laughs> the one that I downloaded. So, yeah. So, I... I Consumed it in four different manners. Written, audio, TV. Um, all within the space of a week. <laughs> so watched the movie twice. Watched the David Suchet um, episode once. Read the book and listened to it. All within the space of a week. That's how much of an Agatha Christie friend <laughs> I am. Um... Excessive, you may think. <laughs> Probably, I reply. <laughs> but there we go. <laughs> That's just the way it is. Um, yeah. So let me know down below 
if you're an Agatha Christie fan and what you thought of that movie. But anyway, the reason that I'm babbling on about it so much is because that then inspired this collage. I saw those ladies and they made me think of the ladies on the, um, the Nile. Maybe they're going to Egypt or maybe they're going on the Orient Express. Either way, they... I watched that and I was inspired by this photo and it kind of all linked together for me. And as you may know from other collages I've done, I like a story with my collage. Um, that's just how I am. Okay, so we've got the circles, water in some form, um, a ticket, a photo. We need a date and the bird, but I still feel like this needs more. I mean, we've got a little postcard. I might cut a postcard out. I've got another little Tim Holtz ticket that could go there, I guess. I did have this boat tag. This could be Tim Holtz too. I don't know. And as I said, as it was deaf on the Nile, I did kind of like that concept. But I feel like I want to do some texture paste. So I don't know if this is, if it would work. I don't know. I mean, I could, if you hear that noise, that's my cat. Holly. Um, maybe I should just cut the boat out. Maybe that would work. Maybe. Maybe that's what the issue is. Maybe I need to take the tag apart and cut it out. Because um, I kind of want to texture paste down there. A little bit. That's what I kind of want to do. So let's do it. Let's cut this out. And yeah, they're going on the Nile. And we all want to go, don't go. <laughs> if Pryro turns up. Get on a different ship. And if you're going to create a crime, do a crime and Poirot's there, just don't do it. It's probably for the best. Don't create, do the crime anyway. But yeah, also, if you're an Agatha Christie fan, tell me, are you a Praro or a Miss Marple? People tend to be one or the other. I mean, people tend to enjoy, obviously, enjoy. I don't know if I like that now. Um, now I've cut it out and I don't know if I like it mm, so annoying people tend to like if you like Agatha Christie you tend to like most of her work no matter who it is there's my scissors obviously uh, but people do tend to prefer either Praro or um, Miss Marple. I am a Poirot person. See, I really like these as well because they're metal. I'm a Poirot person. I prefer his to Miss Marple, which for me is actually quite unusual. Um, but I just really like Poirot. And so I prefer his work. I also really love Tommy and Tuppence as a couple but you don't tend to hear a lot but see it's all just it's not working for me right now so what i need to do is do the birds now i don't know i think i want some color on here do i want some yellow i know it's a lot of blues and there's pink in the background i've also got some craft card or just some white card but i feel like i want a pop of color so that's what we're going with right now and I'm going to use these two little lovebirds. I think I got them free in a magazine. So that's what we're going to use if I can get them off. Um, yeah. And again, it kind of goes with the theme. But the theme of the book. 
not my theme here. <laughs> um, but yeah, let me know what you think down below, whether you're a... Uh, um, this is actually just watercolour scrap that I've got loads of inks and watercolours on. So it's a nice thick paper. It was in my scrap pile. Um, yeah, like I said, let me know down below. But it completely inspired this um, see, yeah, I like those. This layout or the photo that I chose. Anyway, gosh, I've been blabbering on today. See, I think that's just cute. Although this bird now actually looks like it's attacking this bird, which, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, Agatha Christie, murder. Um, <laughs> bit of a worry. <laughs> so, uh, I'm wondering whether I should use double side sticky tape. I don't like using that, so I'm not going to. But yeah, it's very good. Beautifully shot. If you haven't seen it, and you're into either murder mysteries or historical um, settings. It's just so gorgeous. You can tell, you can really tell that he has worked in the theatre because he just has a way. I haven't seen his new one, Belfast, yet, which obviously... I want to see because I think it's set in Belfast. Is it the 60s it's set in? Which is before I was born, but certainly I was growing up in Belfast. Um, you know, when there was a still lot going on. And I've seen from the adverts that it's very kind of black and white. Oh, I mustn't forget the date. And um, obviously he is from Belfast. I wasn't born in Belfast. I was born um, in an area outside of Belfast, but we did go to Belfast a lot. I'm just checking which date I think I like. See, I like this one because I like the writing on this, um, but I don't think, I don't know if it stands out enough or do I want this one? This one seems so clean cut though. It doesn't kind of go with the era. So I think I'm going to have to have this one. Um, and I think I'm going to rough it up a bit again. Um, yeah, from the clips that I've seen of the movie Belfast, it just looks, again, so, oh gosh, beautifully shot. Um, and obviously, like I said, Kenneth Branagh was born in Belfast. It's really rough now, but there you go. Um, let's want it down here there's a lot down here though and I feel like it needs to be up there but I also feel like it needs to be backed and I might back it with some of this just to have the colour um, have more of that colour on there gosh can't find my words thinking too much about Agatha Christie that's what it is I am trying to reread um, as many of my Agatha Christie as possible this year. Well, over the next few years. It is my goal to make sure I read, read the whole collection and track down any ones that I haven't read. That is my goal. I think I want something metal as well. Um... Yeah. So, gosh, where is my pokey tool now? I tried to get my tools organised so that there we go. I have them nearby for when I need them. But there you go. It doesn't always work that way. Um, yeah. So I'm trying to reread them all. I've read four books. I try to do one a month, and we're obviously in April. So I try to read four months, I also, uh, four months, one a month, as well as like watching and stuff, any adaptations. I like to read the books 
and watch an adaptation if there is a version of it. Um, so obviously, just my little Brad Pot, I've watched um, both um, Death on the Nile and Murder on the Orient Express. So I've read both of those this, um, this year. And I also read and watched an absolutely brilliant adaptation of And Then There Were None. And then I read, uh, I think the first book this year was, I read um, Why Didn't They Ask Evans. Um, see, I don't want to poke that all the way through because then I don't know like what I'm going to put here and it will restrict what I'm able to put. But also... I feel like that sticks up too much. Let's really squish this brad down. There we go. That's flat now. Um, yeah. So. So what I feel like I want to do. We've got these pieces. Oh gosh, I'm dropping stuff. Is I want to put some texture paste on. Hope you're not bored. Sorry if you're not into Agatha Christie. And you're like, well, why are you talking so much about Agatha Christie? I've got my Distress Matte texture paste this is my new stencil that I really want to play with um, yeah sorry if you're not into Agatha Christie but it inspired this collage and that's why I'm talking about it if you do like reading Agatha Christie I do have a book Instagram account although not been great at updating it in the past month just because I've been so busy and I really need to get better with social media. <laughs> I'm not one of these people that can scroll for hours. Um, it just stresses me out and I can go ages without going on. See, I like that. I like the bubble look. I feel like I want just a little bit up here as well because there's the pink in the background. Let's just put it on there. But yeah, so there's always a link to that down below in the description. If you're into books and want to check out my bookstagram and see what I'm reading. I'm quite an eclectic, diverse mood reader. So um, yeah, I read a lot of different things. Oh, see, I really like how that looks. And then I feel like it needs some down here too. Um, but yeah. You can check that out if you are interested. And then you will understand why I go on about Agatha Christie. <laughs> I'm actually reading at the moment the... Um, oh, what's her name? Something Grammont's. I'm reading her The Christie Affair, which is a fictional account if you don't know Agatha Christie went missing for 11 days in I think it was 1926 in real life this really happened she went missing no one knew where she was the police got involved and everything and up until the day she died she never once told anyone um what had happened during those 11 days hold on I'm going to dry this texture paste okay that's basically dry now I just wanted it dry because if I'm going to stick stuff on it I need it kind of done as I was saying so in about 1926 Agatha Christie went missing for 11 days she never told anyone why she went missing what happened there's all sorts of theories why it happened her husband was leaving her at the time for his mistress and this Nina de Grom Gramont um fictional account is actually from the point of view of the mistress, which I know sounds odd, but, um, or the supposed mistress. So obviously there's fiction in there. It's not the real account. If you want those, there's plenty of those written. But when I heard this was coming out, I pre-ordered it. <laughs> I got it early, I believe this year. It might have come out in January. And I got it straight away um, because I wanted to read... Um, to read it so I'm in the middle of reading that at the moment I'm feeling like there's something else it needs and I don't know what I mean it looks good it's got everything on there well I think it looks nice it's 
put everything on there but um I still think it's missing something I do have this butterfly which would bring out the yellow there's several bits of yellow isn't there we don't need the butterfly but I kind of I don't know I wanted to use that too and now I feel like yeah I definitely like the butterfly um yeah, so I wanted to read that. I'm enjoying that. Um, because it, it's not what you... Like, it's not... It's not making excuses for the affair, or certainly not at the moment, or anything like that. The It's just very strangely told. It's an interesting perspective to do it from the point of view of this unreliable narrator who is the mistress where's that gone um where have i put the top to the glue oh i'll find it in a minute uh yeah so from the point of view of the unreliable narrator i might want this up on some foam so i've got this very thin foam here and it is thin so it won't give it much dimension but it will give it some Ugh. that's why i don't like foam it's super sticky um yeah and i'm really enjoying that at the moment so i'm reading that alongside because i like to have a couple of books on the go i normally have an audio book that i can listen to so i've got a non-fiction book on the go as well as reading the hard copy of the nina de gramont, de gramont or just gramont i don't know um either way and this just won't stick now look it will stick once it's down <laughs> But it just gives it a little bit of dimension, but not too much. And I think we're done. I think I'm going to leave it like that. I actually quite like it. And they are going on a trip on the Nile, on the Karnak from Death on the Nile. This could even be two of the characters from the original book, actually. That are also sort of in the movie. Anyway, I won't keep going on. I apologise for all the yakety yaki today. So, let me know what you think down below. So, let's have a look. We've got a photo, or a portion of the photo. We've got the whole photo. A ticket, which is back here. A bird. A date. Water in some form. I've used watercolours on the back there. And circles. Lots of circles, including the texture paste. And even the bread. And there we go. Off to sail to get to the Karnak to go for a cruise down the Nile. Oh gosh. Well, if you've listened to me ramble, thank you so much. Um, yeah, thank you for watching, guys. This is week 16. I will be back soon from trying to get back to making sure that Marguerite Miller goes up on a Monday. Marguerite Miller Mondays for um, week 17 of the collage. Again, links will be down below. Always love to hear your comments. And um, thank you for watching, guys. And wherever you are in the world, I hope you are safe. And I hope you're having some crafty fun. Until next time, guys. Bye for now.